Our circulatory system is designed to provide each of our cells with a type of diffusion exchange practiced by simple unicellular organisms living in aquatic environments. This exchange occurs at the level of the tiniest blood vessels, capillaries, where wastes, nutrients, gases, and hormones are exchanged between the blood and the body cells. With walls only a single cell thick, capillaries are well adapted to their role of exchange. Most nutrients, oxygen, and carbon dioxide diffuse readily through capillary cell membranes. Salts and small charged molecules, including some small proteins, move through fluid-filled spaces within the capillary cell membrane or between adjacent capillary cells. Pressure within capillaries causes a continuous leakage of fluid from the blood plasma into the spaces surrounding the capillaries and adjacent tissues. This fluid, known as interstitial fluid, consists primarily of water in which nutrients, hormones, gases, wastes, and small proteins from the blood are dissolved. The exchange of materials between capillary blood and nearby cells occurs through this interstitial fluid, which bathes nearly all the cells of the body. Capillaries are so narrow that red blood cells must pass through them in single file. Consequently, blood is sure to pass very close to the capillary walls. In addition, capillaries are so numerous that no body cell is more than 100 micrometers or four thousandths of an inch from a capillary. These factors facilitate the exchange of materials by diffusion. It is estimated that the total length of capillaries in a human is over 80,600 kilometers or 50,000 miles. As blood is forced through this narrow, almost endless network of capillaries, the speed of blood flow drops very quickly, further enhancing diffusion by increasing the amount of time available for the blood and cells to exchange materials. All cells need oxygen. It is the essential fuel which is necessary to enable cells to stay alive and to carry out their various activities. Bringing oxygen to the cells requires the uptake of oxygen from the air in the lungs, its transportation in the blood, and its delivery to cells all over the body. The first step is the taking up of oxygen by blood flowing through fine capillaries in the walls of the lungs air sacs or alveoli. The oxygen molecules change from their state as a gas freely circulating in the air, dissolving into a solution in the plasma within the capillaries of the alveoli. Once in the solution of the blood, 98% of this dissolved oxygen is taken up by passing red cells, leaving just 2% remaining in the physical solution unattached. Red cells are particularly well suited to transporting oxygen because they contain a special oxygen binding protein known as hemoglobin. Each molecule of hemoglobin itself contains four molecules of heme, an iron-containing pigment, which binds oxygen loosely and reversibly. Hemoglobin that is fully saturated with oxygen is bright red and is called oxyhemoglobin. On the other hand, hemoglobin that is not saturated with oxygen is purplish-blue in color and is called deoxyhemoglobin. It is heme which makes it possible for the red cells to pick up oxygen dissolved in the blood, transport it combined with hemoglobin, and release it back into the blood as oxygen in solution, ready for delivery to the various cells of the body. Hemoglobin gives up its oxygen as red cells travel through capillaries in tissues where there is a low content or partial pressure of oxygen. The partial pressure of oxygen represents the level of dissolved oxygen in plasma. As oxygen is released and again is carried in solution, the partial pressure of oxygen in the capillaries becomes greater than the partial pressure of oxygen in the surrounding tissues. This causes oxygen to move out of the capillaries into the tissues.